Good evening. I'm Craig Gustafson, here again to welcome you and act as your host for another presentation of Green Man Classics. Next week, we'll have a double feature of The Mark of Zorro and Tobor the Great, but for tonight, Night of the Grolics. Five short plays of drama, comedy, satire, and horror. We'll be performing live theater again soon, but for now, enjoy the ride. And please consider making a donation to Green Man Theater Troupe of Elmhurst, Illinois. Go to www.greenmantheater.org and click on the donate button. So now, if you're quite ready, let us begin. Thank you all for coming. Let's get started. Now, I'm Flint McGregor, and I'm preparing for the end of my life. Now, look, I'm, I'm not sick, and I don't have any premonitions. I just want to make sure my family isn't screwed over when I'm gone. Plan. See, I'm all about planning. So if you could introduce yourselves. I'm April Springs, and I'm with the Acme Funeral Home here in Lombard. I'm Bridget Quasar, Bernie Brothers Crematorium. DuPage County. Hi, let me share this with you. I'm with the Sunshine Catering Company of Elmhurst, Oceana Grok. Hi. Shimoni, mozzarella importers, Chicago. And your name? Puddentain, don't say a fucking word. Okay, let's start off with the basics. April, what do you offer? Offer? Oh, offer. Oh, you mean the funeral stuff. That's right. The funeral stuff. Well, our standard package includes removal of the body from the place of death, embalming and preparation for visitation, dressing, cosmetology, casketing, storage, a visitation or viewing, a funeral ceremony, and delivery of the body to the cemetery. Thank you. I'm welcome. Uh, you, I mean, you're welcome. Bridget? Well, there's traditional cremation and direct cremation. And that means? With traditional cremation, the body is taken from the place of death to the funeral home, where it's embalmed, dressed, and prepared for a viewing at a memorial service. After which, the body is taken to the crematorium and incinerated. The family will later receive the ashes. And with direct cremation? We swoop in, snap up your body, burn your ass up. Your choice. We recommend the direct approach. Excellent. Pudding tame? There is very little fuss. We wait until the night with a clear sky, take you out on a boat, put your feet in cement, and drop you into Lake Michigan, or any of the Great Lakes, actually, for an added fee. A short ceremony is involved. Well, how soon after I die do you pick up the body? Oh, you wish to be dead first. Ah, this is a very cost-effective measure, as we hire fewer you know, funeral directors. Great. Oceana? We have a large variety of oblivion scenarios, autumn hay rides, Friday night fish fries, parachute jumps. How do I jump from a plane if I'm dead? Let me share this with you. The mourners jump, you plummet. Truth be told, you're defenestrated at 10,000 feet. Kinky. We think so. Religious affiliations, important, unimportant? That's up to you. Can I get a Jewish ceremony? Are you in fact Jewish? No, but if it gets me a better deal, I'll convert. Talk to me about your passion for your job. Why should I use your services? Let me share this with you. Because we're nuts. 
we're crazy. My partner Orion and I, when we decided to expand our catering business to include funerals, we smoked a couple of joints and we got really creative. We were the first to outfit the mourners' chairs with whoopee cushions. <laughs> Whatever crazy idea or far out gimmick that you have in mind, we're here to make that happen. It'll be the most fun you ever have in your entire death. With cremation, we're environmentally friendly. We're not polluting up the earth by cramming it full of corpses, uh uh. No pollution, because we care. We roast you to a cinder, and you dispose of the ashes however you like. Spread them in the ocean, spill them from a plane. Isn't that pollution? Who gives a shit? I guess I'm more of a traditionalist. To me, helping a family find solace is the most important thing. I find that there's peace and dignity in laying a person to rest. Boring. Hypocrite. Profit means nothing, right? Pudding tame? I just like to drop people in water and watch them sink. Fair enough. Upgrades. We have the Navy Pier Plan. Our associates will take you out for dinner at the Billy Goat Tavern. You will enjoy a fine view of the sunset from the Navy Pier Ferris wheel. Three tickets to Chicago Shakespeare. I believe their current offering is Measure for Measure, starring Drew Barrymore and Bobcat Goldway. <laughs> he cracks me up. But if I'm already dead... You will not fully enjoy the evening. I suggest that you snap up this offer. Do not be the last one on your block to get this. Eh, keep up with your neighbors. April? For your coffin, we offer Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Well. And GPS. We put a fully operational GPS directly above your face. No surprises. You'll always know exactly where you are. Bridget? We outfit you with suntan oil and Ray-Bans. I apply the suntan oil personally and thoroughly. Then I take your body and I thrust it in the cremation chamber, giving you a send-off normally reserved for Viking warriors. With respect, with ceremony, with passion. Oh. Yes. Yes. Yay! I could use a cigarette. Let me share this with you. I'll give you a final fuck. Flat out, right there on the slab. Of course, I have to be on top. You can't do that. Why not? He'll definitely be stiff. I find this to be crossing the line. Come on, Flint. You'll love it. I know I will. I don't know about that. Hey, what about sex before I'm dead? What are you, sick? I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Uh, pricing. Give me a ballpark figure. Basic services to deluxe. Uh, Oceana. High end? $50,000. We take your body to Trump Tower and guarantee that Donald Trump himself will visit your corpse. Nope, not even if I'm dead. Could I visit his corpse? Or the celebrity of your choice. I hear Brent Spiner is quite reasonably priced. Low end? If it's in the summer, we take you to Lombard on cruise night. We drive you around in a fully restored candy apple red 1957 Thunderbird convertible. $2,000. Bridget? High end, $10,000.
if you include a marble urn with your face engraved on it, low end, $2,000. And I light you with matches until you're done. Then we bake your ashes into a ceramic keepsake, you know, like they do for doggy paws. As a matter of fact, if your pet dies at the same time, we can imprint his paws on you. No extra charge. Wooden team? Low end, $2,012.32. For your basic drag and drop, high end, $28,467.09, for which you can pretend you are Jean Valjean from La Miserable and a Shaoni associate of your choice is Jalvert chasing you down from place to place for 13 days until he guns you down in the city or suburb of your choice. All singing is included. Do not be a sucker. Grab it. April, what can you do for me? Anything. Price-wise, April, price-wise. Uh, yes. Yes, of course. Our high end runs about $10,000 with all the bells and whistles, around $4,000 for bare bones. Oh, I mean, not, not literally bare bones. I mean... I know what you mean. Anyone care to uh, sweeten the pot? Well, I could go down to $1,800. What? You whore. $1,750. I can go down just as well as you can. Seventeen hundred. Seventeen hundred and five. That's higher. I got overhead. Sixteen fifty. Sixteen hundred. And yes, we can have sex before you die. Fifteen hundred, and I'll bring the handcuffs. Um, I'll be dropping out now. It's nice to meet you. Fifteen hundred, and I bring my partner. Fifteen hundred, and I bring my sisters, four of them. That's enough. Fourteen hundred dollars, and I'll mud wrestle these bitches simultaneously naked. Whoa. What? Hey, look, you don't, you don't want to mess with me, motherfucker. He's mine. I think we have a winner. Thank you for coming, ladies. It was, it was great meeting you. Here's my card, in case you can escape her. Jesus, this burns me up. Take my card. Oh, look, you, you gave me about 20 of these. Let me share this with you. They're edible. A pause. Then Flint and April kiss passionately. You know, I really thought you were going to take them apart. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Who should we have in next week? Uh, electricians? Architects? Plumbers. driving in this. I suppose. Daddy's a good driver though, right? Oh, sure he is, honey. It's just, it's dangerous out there in a storm like this. Did something going to hurt Daddy? Oh, oh no, no, everything's gonna be fine. I didn't mean to warn you. That's good. Get 
mommy some more tea, please and thank you. Sure. Am I putting honey in this? Uh, yes, please. Well, I mean, am I putting honey in this? Yes or no? Yes. There's other stuff I can put in this thing, Imogen. What am I putting in your tea? <laughs> uh, pork and beans? Close. Cat treats? Could be. Fluff won't need them anymore. She's dead, you know. Oh, I know, baby. I know. Huh? It's honey. <laughs> Maybe. Why did Fluff have to die? Oh, well, sweetie, <laughs> Fluff was getting pretty old. No, I mean, why did Fluff have to die? What are you talking about? Oh, no! No, 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 please, please come back on, please come back on, please come back on. It's okay, Mommy. I'm here. Oh, I know, honey, I know. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. Just say it. Carol won't let anything bad happen to me. 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 Thanks, honey. I, I feel better. Hey, you turn on your flashlight and I'll turn on my flashlight and we'll tell stories. Yeah, okay, sure. I'll start. There's a preamble. Preamble? Where did you get that word? I do read, you know, later. Uh, okay, so what's the preamble? Why did you and Daddy pick this house to live in? It's really old and the stairs creak. Well, I don't know, Pumpkin. We just kind of fell in love with it at first sight. Why? Don't you like it here? Well, I did the first time, but not again. Okay, I repeat. What do you mean, first time? When I lived here a long time ago with my first mommy. What? Before I died. I was really young. It was a long time ago. Hey, Carol, this isn't funny. I'll say, there's nothing funny about death, Goodwin. Carol? That's a quote from a near old book. Uh, Carol? Gilbert didn't like me reading. Who's Gilbert? My older brother, from before. I mean, not now. Oh my God, Carol! He was the one who killed me. He was mean. Stop it! He killed all of us. He was very enterprising when he put his mind to it. Where are you getting this stuff? From Gilbert. He reminded me about all of it. What? When? For about a year since we moved here. He tells me things at night in the dark. Carol! He wants to move in. Move in? Where? Never mind. I said, you can't move in, Gilbert. I'm using it. He didn't like that. So I said, so right. What are you going to do, Gilbert? Kill me again? Gilbert didn't like that. Uh, Carol, I'm telling you. So Gilbert you're... killed Fluff. Yes. I didn't see that one coming. Uh, this is Gilbert the... didn't like Fluff. Carol, this is the last warning. You need to stop this. Stop it now. Please don't yell at me, Mommy. All right. All right. Gilbert doesn't like it when you yell at me. That's it. Go to your room right now. Gilbert doesn't like it when you yell at me. Yelling makes him kill people. Like Miss Corbett, she was our nanny. She yelled at Gilbert this one time, so Gilbert waited until the next time she was alone with us, and he poisoned her. Stop it, please! I said, you're just a bad boy, Gilbert. And they poured electricity on him, and he died. He really didn't like that. So he came back and killed all of us. Damn it! Mommy! I wish your father would get home. Well, that might not happen. Excuse me? Daddy yelled at me the other night because I had finished my homework. Gilbert doesn't like Daddy. <gasps> you need help. I think something happened to Daddy's car. He might not be home tonight. You don't know anything about cars. Gilbert does. Gilbert knows a lot of things. Oh, God, baby, stop. Stop it, please. You yelled at me about the dishes last night, Mommy. Stop, please! I'm so sorry, Mommy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, 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 never mind about the dishes. Forget it, forget it. I mean, I'm so sorry, Mommy. Gilbert doesn't like you. Oh, sweetie, it's okay. Nothing bad is gonna happen. Oh, please, stop crying. <laughs> Carol! <laughs> Carol? Carol? <laughs> what is it, Miss Corbett? <coughs> Finish your tea. <laughs> uh, Carol won't let anything bad happen to me. Carol won't let anything bad happen to me. Carol won't let anything bad happen to me. Stop it! Stop it! What's so funny, Carol? Carol! That's 
what's funny. I'm not Carol. I'm Gilbert. Miss Dang. Isn't it though? My partner Jennifer Wang just acquired it. She can give you the background on it if you want. Well, what about the background? Is this by some famous hoity toity Chinese artist? Oh, I don't know, Miss Doris. Just call me Doris. And why don't you know about the sketch? You're Chinese, aren't you? No, I'm Vietnamese. Jennifer is Chinese. Look, so if you fair. So dignified. How much do you want for it? Jen? Susan? How much for the sketch of the Mandarin? He's not a Mandarin. He's a doctor. How much for the doctor? It's for Doris. Jesus. You give a Miss Eva 32,421 you want. 30? How much is that in American? $5,000. It's good price. Oh, well, that's much better. 32000 You scared the poop out of me. <laughs> I'll take it. This frame doesn't have a glass. Would you like one? Absolutely. I'll pick it up later with my watercolors, my box of pastels, and a can of turpentine. Large economy size. You crafty Chinese, you certainly drive a hard bargain. I'm not Chinese, I'm Vietnamese. <laughs> what difference does it make? Before I go, I must ask, do you speak Asian? Asian? Oh yes, so exotic. Please speak a bit of Asian for me. Joe may be gone mail, doy lin, do and vet goi my. Oh my, oh my, so beautiful. Ta ta, ladies, I'll be back. Would you knock that shit off, please? <laughs> what was that you said to her? I hope your clitoris gets licked raw by a hungry cat. Ouchers. This mandarin is not worth $5,000. Oh, but Mickey, she very, very happy. And he a doctor. I hate you. I'm going to go and put this check in the bank. Put some glass in this frame, will you? Okie dokie. Grab me a donut on the way back, will you? Yep, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. There'll be donuts round the corner, donuts round the corner, donuts round the corner for me. Um, see, um, dum, dum, dum. Barn enters. A menacing looking young man, cheerfully nasty. A class bully who thinks he's the class clown. Good morning. Welcome to Wang Dang Doodle Art Supplies. I'm Jennifer Wang. Can I help you? Nah, just looking. And indeed he is, at Jennifer's breasts. Those aren't for sale, actually. Yeah, right. Ugh, you've impaled me with your razor wits. Huh? How shall I recover from this mortal wound? Huh? Your dazzling repartee, your keen wit, your runny nose. You're pretty smart mouth for a gook, ain't you? Hey, my partner's a goop. I'm a chink. At least get your pejorative terminology correct. My God, where were you brought up? Huh? I can deal with racists, but incompetent racists are a real bug on my ass. Okay, this has been fun, but I have work to do. Please buy something or leave. Hey, I'm buying, I'm buying. 
Hey, you know what I want to do with these pastels? Hey. Trade them in for crayons. I want to rub them all over your body. Get you some different colors in there, hey? Cover up the yellow. How would you feel about that, huh? Arn makes the mistake of giving Jennifer a shoulder to shove. She takes his arm and twists it behind his back. Hey! Ow! What the fuck? Let go my arm! Sully, me you don't understand American talk. Now get out of here and don't come back. Well, this is uh, interesting. I'll be with you in a second. I have to take out the trash. Dad, make her let go. My arm's coming off. Well, Arn, why is she doing that? I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't have sex with her in the back, and the little whore just went off on me. Please let him go, miss. Yeah, we... oh. Arn, get out of here. I told you before about starting trouble in stores. Now, you're grounded for two weeks. Now, now go home. I said go home. <laughs> what am I speaking, Chinese? No offense. No, of course not. You know what you are? You're a bully. No. I suspect any girl could probably kick your ass. Uh, so. <laughs> well, can I show you something? Oh, uh, well, no, 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 thank you. Uh, uh, I'm supposed to meet my wife here. Uh, she's the artist in the family. Uh, is it okay if I uh, look around? Of course, Mr. Uh, uh, Tulip. <laughs> Do you have a first name? No. All righty then. Thanks. Yeah, I had a bit of an interruption. This is Mr. Tulip. No first name. You sure this isn't a Mandarin? He's a doctor, all right, Susan? God damn it. May uh, I see that? Sure, but it's already sold. Oh, just uh, looking. So, this is the doctor's sketch? Yep. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> That's the doctor's sketch. This son of a bitch! Are you crazy? No. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy about this oriental piece of crap. I'm not crazy about... Two slants opening a store in my city. And I'm not crazy about the Chinese flu. I'm not Chinese. I'm Vietnamese. What difference does it make? Look, I'm not saying that you're not cute uh, in an inferior way. Uh, you're very cute. You're very cute. Do, 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 do. I'm an important man in Naperville. I'm the um, secretary of the Chamber of Commerce. Oh. Oh. Is this place up to code? I bet it isn't. But I'm sure we could make an arrangement. Oh, what you want, American man? You want bouncy bouncy? Pokey pokey? Stinky pinky? Listen, uh, I've always wanted to know. I mean, I know about the eyes, but are you really slanted down there? Oh, you betcha, Mr. Tulip. But we happen to way down sideways. You get angle light between the eyes. Pow! It's very sexy. <laughs> You're making fun of me, aren't you? No! No way! Uh -uh. Bad move. This is going to be fun. Mr. Tulip starts to reach for Jennifer, remembers what happened to Arn, spins and seizes Susan's breasts. Susan, with a half keto move, forces Mr. Tulip to his knees and breaks his arm. 
Jesus Christ. You're right. That was fun. I'm back, ladies. Get my husband on the floor. Bitch broke my arm. Some inscrutable cheap move. Actually, I learned it from Greg Winston in Chicago. I'm sure it wasn't unprovoked. Is my purchase ready? My God! What happened to my doctor sketch? Your husband drew a stethoscope on it right before he grabbed Susan's kit. You drew on it? Percy! Oh! oh Percy, Percy Tulip! <laughs> Shut up! Percy, you behave yourself! <laughs> that sketch cost $5,000, Percy! The check is cash, Percy. Wait, wait, wait. five thousand. You apologize to these young ladies. You heard her, Percy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now go home and leave them alone. Do you hear me? Yes, dear. There, we're all friends again, right? Of course. Nishi Shaurinda Heishi Shing. R. Ninda Narenda Yin Ting Sui Shao. So beautiful. Here's your purchase. You know from your accent, I say you're the nicest New York lady I've ever met. New York? Are you calling me a Jew? I'm from Highland Park, Illinois. What, what difference does it make? make? by the Greek Strabo, 24 AD. There is also a large island, Eon, which stretches parallel to Britain in the north. Concerning this island, I have nothing certain to tell, except that its inhabitants are more savage than the Britons. They count it an honorable thing, when their fathers die, to devour them and openly to have intercourse, not only with the other women, but also their mothers and sisters. Eirn, of course, is now known to us as Ireland. Can the ancient observations of Strabo have any relevance to us here in Boston, now in 1854? Of of course they can! As we gather this evening to honor our Congressman-elect Nathaniel Banks, I remind the eminent members of the Know Nothing Party of our laudable goals. We propose to establish labor rights, to oppose the institution of slavery, to help our noble sisters to a state of equality and to keep the fucking Irish out of this country. Well, three out of four ain't bad. Silence, please. In the past 14 years, Boston alone has suffered the infestation of some 37,000 of these ragged creatures. Their slavering ape-like jaws dripping with alcohol and unholy lust. The American Negroes, of course, are delighted with this influx, for they now have someone they can look down upon. The Irish, following their papal dictator, intend using their potato famine as a facade for their gradual conquest of our American way of life. Make no mistake, 
America welcomes everybody. This proud land offers its hand to every visitor to our shores, regardless of race, creed, or color. Except the Irish. My proposal, to which I hope our esteemed congressman elect Banks will give some attention, is to erect encampments in rural areas, thrust these bog trotters into them, and confine them until such time as sufficient means may be secured to send all of them back to their putrid emerald isle. Gentlemen, this potato peril must be obliterated. I thank you. Well, Margaret, is it strong enough? Hey. The only time I have encountered anything that strong, Judge Crumblewitty, was when last I emptied your chamber pot. Thank you. Wasted sarcasm. You've been with the family now for 20 years, Margaret. I trust you implicitly. <gasps> Even though I'm Irish? Well, you're one of the good ones. Oh, happy day for me. Are you ready to see the applicants for housemaid? Oh, crumbs. That would be today, wouldn't it? You've interrogated them all, whittled it down to a choice of three. Aye. And none of them is Irish. See for yourself, sir. In with you, then. Judge Crumblewoody will see you now. Good morning, ladies. Please. Have a seat. I am August Q. Crumblewoody, Associate Justice of the Massachusetts Supreme Court. Welcome. Presumably, you have been edified by Margaret as to the minutia of your position here. And what remains is for me to espy which of you will be of greatest account to my household. We shall begin with you, mistress, uh, arise and acquaint me with your curriculum, Visha. Tell himself about you. Ah, uh, good morning, mine her. My name is Lulu Flüger, and I'm from Leipzig, Germany. And I have been in America for the last three years. I have recently come to Boston after residing for three years in Salem. Interesting. Why Salem? I came to hunt for witches. I hate witches. For them bitches, bitches for my discipline. Did you find any witches and burn them? No. Not so as you notice. Since then, I have been employed by Felix von Liederschwanz, Burgermeister of New Braintree. In what capacity? Housekeeper. I run a tight ship, miner. If you choose to employ me, you shall have order. You shall have discipline. Why did you leave von Liederschwanz? Burgermeister von Liederschwanz had an accident. Somebody denounced him as a witch and burned him all up. We don't burn witches anymore. Yeah. Know this. No. Bad luck. Lieber arm, drum, arms, arm, alb. It's better to be poor than to have one arm less. Pray, what the devil does that mean? It could be worse. Thank you. Have a seat. Ah, you, mistress. Bonjour. My name is Zuzu Chirital. I come from the little village of Montetan. Montetan? Never heard of it. What does that mean? If you were to employ me, I would show you both of them. Oh, monsieur, my childhood, it was the tragedy. I fell into the love. My parents, they did not approve. You are yet too young, they cried. How could they know the beauty of the stars under the Montaton sky? The seduction of the sweet, sweet wine as a free ticket to the fireman's ball. With a broken heart, 
I ran to America to forget, to forget, oh, may we. Unhappy girl. What was the fellow's name? The Montetone Volunteer Fire Department Men's Choir, baritone section. In the event, I came to light in Cambridge. Ah, Middlesex County. <laughs> I know it well. What attracted you to Middlesex? I have always had for the Middlesex the attraction, monsieur. I found employment in a Cambridge tavern, the Giggling Goose. A tavern, you say? Indeed. Indeed. It was all that I could find, monsieur. It is my hope to find the escape. I am very conscientious, monsieur. You'd find the work here hard, terribly hard. I like it hard, monsieur. Well, 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 well we, we, we shall see. La nuit pour conseil. The night brings advice. I beg your pardon. Sleep on it. Buongiorno, signore. From Italy, are you? Begara, and how would you be guessing that? <coughs> oh, I mean, that's the right boss. Sure, and that's what I meant to say. My name is a Pupa de Topo Gigio, and I'm a comb from a Fukia. From where? Fukia. F O C C H O A. Fukia. Proceed. Right on, Captain. Oh, that's a right boss. From the time I'm a little bambina, me sainted mother always left me in charge of the house. I cook at the breakfast, I wash at the dish, I notice my little baby brother, Wally. Uh, Giuseppe. Your brother, eh? Oi! Uh, see. Si. But I was a too young to nurse anybody, so I give her the wee macaroon a slug of brandy. Good heavens! What was the result of such an action? Willie started to follow in our St. Bernard all over the place. Mistress Di Topo Gigio. Caught him, too. Wristled the poor booger to the groan to get at that keg. The dog bet him. We had to put him to sleep. The dog? We don't like to talk about it, Captain. Oh, Signore, sorry. Have a seat, please. Ladies, I confess a suspicion. I suspect that you are not German, French, and Italian. I suspect a ruse on the part of Margaret. I suspect each of you is actually Irish. You persist in your claims. Yes. No. Me. See, for feck's sake. This has been a waste of my time, ladies, and I resent it. I resent it strongly. Well, now, isn't that just too bad? I beg your pardon. <laughs> Do not take such a tone with me, my girl. Well, Lord, it all. Imagine that. Camp Horta. You can stop now, love. I was just getting the hang of it. Leave my house. I am deeply sorry, but this includes you, Margaret. You are discharged from my service. Oh, why do you not think so, Boyo? <laughs> it is my opinion that you shall be employing all three of these ladies in addition to myself. There's work enough for all. Kipish. Hey, that's mine! Sorry, love. <clears throat> Do you know who is waiting at your doorstep? Who? Oh. Reporters. The Daily Mail. The Courier. The Liberator. Ned Woodlawn, Sunday paper! Someone chips them you are entertaining three unmarried women in your stately home. Three unmarried Irish women. The editors are all friends of mine. They <laughs> won't print this. Oh, I bet they will. They all think you're anti-Irish. I shall summon the neighborhood constable. Which one? Flaherty? Clancy? Mulligan? Schwartz? Now I can sneak these ladies out the back door. 
Or we can all go visit yon reporters with a terrific story of news. What do you require? Your word of honor that you shall retain me in my position and that you shall employ these three ladies to assist me. They have been unable to find work due to you and your mouthy chums. And they're each of them hard workers. Very well. I agree. You have my word of honor. Good on you, Judge. You shan't regret it. Saints preserve us. Dad? Oh, man, what did I do? What? Jackie, you call me Daddy. Everything's copacetic. Dad uh, means I'm in for it. I didn't know I did that. I'm old. Nothing escapes me. You're not that old. I'm a lot older than I was two weeks ago. I know, Dad. Still in trouble? That's right. What's up? The service for Mom. Such poppycock. I, I can't be with her when she's alone and scared in the hospital, but by golly, I sure can put her in the ground with style. Everybody's standing six feet apart wearing masks. Probably couldn't hear what I said. I could hear you, Dad. And I need to ask you something. What, honey? Brackets. No, I don't get it. Do you still have the printout of Mom's last message? Uh, yeah, it's around here somewhere. Um, your grandmother started that, you know. I know. It said everyone should get their final say in life. I know that. Dad, I got an email from Mom. I don't think so. Uh, here it is. She sent it to me right after she tested positive for COVID. I, I, I just couldn't do it. I, I couldn't open it. And finally, I did. Today. And? Dear Yaki Dumb Squeegee, I'm going in shortly and will likely have a ventilator shoved in my throat and who knows what other orifices or beside. Anyway, I'm not as young as I used to be. Shit, I'm not as young as anybody used Language. to Language. Exactly. And I need a favor. As you know, my mom started this asinine ritual of people writing out a final message to be read at their funerals. Did you ever hear of such horseshit? Language. Don't shoot the messenger. Now, honey, over the past 25 years that your dad and I have been editing the Lombardiac, everything has been kept squeaky clean for our readership to the point where dad goes over my editorials and blue pencils them to within an inch of their lives. Drives me right up a tree. So when it comes to my funeral, I want you to put him on a leash. This is my time to say whatever the fuck I want. Language, I will not tell you again, young lady. I'm 45. You spank me now, I'll call a cop. Here is what I want to say. Don't let him change it. So let, let me see just how much I failed mom at being too scared to open up her email. Greetings, my dear family and wonderful friends. That's in brackets. Mom's original is, hello suckers, welcome to my final fart fest. <laughs> A final fact fest, just like her. Tell me about the brackets. You rewrote Mom's funeral speech. What are the brackets? It's journalistic honesty. It means this is not exactly what the speaker said, but we are defining a cloudy idiom. You define my cloudy mom. So, read on, Macduff. 
I love you all, and I just wanted to be sure you all knew that. Ellipses. Dot, dot, dot. Right. She rambled on a bit, so I, I trimmed it. I love you all, with the exception of Mabel Prentice, Phyllis Basso, Yvonne Anderson. Hell, come to think of it, most of you were pains in my ass, and I just wanted to be sure you all knew that. Really? Joan was being facetious. And? That's not the place for humor. It's the best place for humor. It, it, it's not the place for, for brackets or ellipses. I was clarifying what she intended to say. And, and what if you got her intention wrong? I didn't get them wrong. Read. For those of you with any doubt, let me be plain. I passionately believe that there is a loving God who watches over us. Freeze. Brackets. For those of you with any doubt, let me be plain. I passionately believe that there is no loving God who watches over us. Ellipses. Whether we're tossing coins in a collection basket and a pathetic attempt at celestial bribery or just lying with someone in front of a fireplace making the beast with two backs or three backs if you're lucky. What, what is with this, Dad? You censored Mom. I edited Joan. I was not going to bury my wife without love, without dignity, without God. Because that's what she was really looking for, right? An editor? You know, that one we both fucked up colossally. I did not want people laughing at my wife. She wanted to get laughs. You don't clarify what people say. You report it in their own words. Well, it's a little late now. It is. So what do you want me to do? Print mom's funeral speech in the next edition. As she wrote it. Don't help her. I'll think it over. Uh, and there's this. I took a COVID test a couple days ago. I haven't gotten the results yet. You'll be fine. I'm in an at-risk group. There's my funeral speech. If I croak, I'd like you to read it. Don't help me. Just read it. Are you crazy? I mean, this is frivolous. It's ungrammatical. It's a, an unholy mess. You bet. Have fun reading it. Jackie, I did the right thing. Do the wrong thing, Dad. For me. No promises. Kiss me goodbye. Hell no. No? Hello? I just took a COVID test? Yeah, if it's negative, I'll come back and kiss you all over your big sloppy face. Bye. See you later, alligator. If you're wrong, crocodile. See you later, Dad. Good morning. Thank you all for coming to this memorial on Zoom. Jackie would have been so thrilled. There's, we have a custom in our family. We all, before we say goodbye, I would like to read you Jackie's last words. The family, friends, and wombat fuckers, and womp, whoever else who shows up. Thanks for flippancy. Come on, Dad, you can do it. If I haven't revised this piece of shit paper, it means that I kicked the bucket pretty soon after Mom died. So Dad is having a really rough time right now. But he's strong, and I know he'll come through for me.
I'm, I'm scribbling, scribbling these thoughts in early, in early August, August 2020, 2020, and there are more than 150,000 deaths in the land, in of, the the land of the free, due entirely to that President Trump, Trump and the incredible dickheads who are too tight-ass and inbred to put on a goddamn mask. mask. I'm not kidding. You. I can't, I can't believe, believe that, that this country, which has a history, has a history of, of pulling together for the common, common good, could be waist high in this in... much shit. <sighs> and I ain't going to lie to you. I got the real bug up my ass about this whole shebang that the orange twat waffle that is ass kissers can ride through the country like this nonstop. It's awful. Jesus, they could at least use a lubricant. So yes, I love you all, blah, blah, blah. But please, for fuck's sake, put on a mask. No, for the sake of the people you love. Oh, and get off Pritzker's ass. He's trying to save everybody's lives, even jagoffs who don't want to be saved. Last thing. Help dad when you have a chance. He puts his life into helping this community. It's payback time. He loves his newspaper. He loves his neighborhood. He loved me. And he really loved my mom. Joe. I am so, so sorry. Until we meet again, remember what I always said, fight as hard as you can, but if you have to go down, go down on someone you love. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. I love you, Daddy. <laughs>